Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in the perfect church? Where the singing, if you want it to have singing there, is heavenly. And always singing my favourite hymns. But at the same time, so much absolute silence. Where there is such a warm welcome. But lots of space without having to speak to anyone. Where the church is full, heaving. But you can always arrive a moment before worship begins and take your usual seat. Where the church keeps getting new worshippers in more and more. But still you know everyone. Where there are no squabbles, no fallings out. And where the pastor spends all their time visiting, but is always home when you need them. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in such a church? Fulton Sheen, a Roman Catholic archbishop in the last century in the USA, wrote these words. He came, that's Jesus, to put a harlot above a Pharisee, a penitent robber above a high priest, and a prodigal son above his exemplary brother, to all the phonies and fakers who would say they could not join the church because his church was not holy enough. He would ask, how holy must the church be before you will enter into it? If the church were as holy as they wanted it to be, they would never be allowed into it. Our blessed Lord brought a religion where the admission of sin is the condition of coming to him. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are ill. Strong words to the church today. How much can we sometimes think we've got it all right inside or outside the church? If only the church did what I wanted, it would be full to the heaving and I know everything that's... Well, no, actually, we're reminded we're all sinners. Accepting that is necessary as we come to Jesus. We need to acknowledge who we are, warts and all, and thus come to Jesus with our whole heart, with our whole body, with our whole being. The invitation to communion is behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper, or in a different translation from the Latin, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The response follows. We say it so often, maybe we don't think about it. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Again, a different translation from the Latin. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. that I'm not worthy to receive you as a play on words in English, which sort of is, is nice, but it doesn't capture the same. I'm not worthy you should enter under my roof. In responding, we echo the words of the Roman centurion who had asked Jesus that he might heal his child. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you. I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I'm not worthy that you should come into my house, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I'm not worthy, I'm not wonderful, I mess up, but Jesus still wants to enter into my house. Jesus wants to draw close and close and closer to me, to all of us. Not because we're wonderful, but because we are known by God, created in the image of God, loved by God. And this is good news, the most wonderful news for us, 
and for the whole church throughout the world, we are loved and wanted by God. But we do need to admit we're not perfect, not individually, not as a congregation. We come to Jesus as we truly are, in need of that healing that comes only from him. Him who wants us to be made whole. This applies to us as individuals, as congregations, as a deanery, as the church universal. We can kid ourselves that everything is okay with us, while declaring that we are the only ones who've got it right. But if we do so, we are kidding ourselves. We need to come to Jesus in penitence, accepting who we are and wanting to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Gospel reading, Jesus sends his followers out, away from the church, if you like, away to tell other people about Jesus, to tell other people about God's love for them. Not expecting everyone to come in, but rather going out. But how often do we hear someone say, well, I would come to church, but well, I can't because of something that's happened in my past. Or saying that God couldn't possibly love them because something they've done, something they are, their sort just aren't loved by God. The feeling that God couldn't possibly bless someone like them. Or even is it sometimes turned round and people declare in the church that we wouldn't want their sort here. As if somehow we have a veto over God, who God can and can't love. We don't. God so loved the world we hear in John's Gospel, that he sent his only son so that all who believe in him may have eternal life. God so loved the world and all who believe in him may have eternal life. Fairly clear there, it's not for us to say who is and isn't included. Jesus said, go out, meet, engage with those who are outside the church. Meet with them, eat with them, drink with them, get to know them, show them God's love, proclaim God's healing, and show them something of the kingdom of God, whoever they are. The Northern Church's Easter Fun Day, just at the end of August after its rearranged date, was a good example of this not going there to preach at people, not going there to tell people to repent of their sins, not going there to tell people to come to church, just showing that God loves them, wants to bestow blessings upon them, no matter who they are, because God is love, and we must keep that at the centre of our lives, at the centre of our faith at the centre of our, the whole of our being, love. We are to show God's love to others. We are to declare God's healing to others. We are to help other people come into a closer relationship with Jesus. And as we do that, our relationship with Jesus also must change as we are drawn closer to him. May the whole of this parish, inside and outside the worshipping community of this church, come to know Jesus more and experience the healing that can come only from God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.